vampire. I will suck your blood. I am a vampire. I will turn into a bat. Blood. Blood. Don't invite me to your home. I am very shiny. Blood. I will suck your blood. 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 Oi there, mate. It's garbage day hour eight. In the room for this hour, Boots, Rain Gear, Bunny Bread, Isfahan, Jimmy Franks, JT, and our artist for this hour is King Calamari. Welcome back. Hour eight, garbage day. We're uh, just over a quarter of the way through. We're at, I think, at least double the goal we were at at this time last year. So Yay! That's something. God damn right. That's good. Yeah, that's real good. Uh, thank you so much for uh, raising donations to give to the National Network uh, of Abortion Funds. Uh, You're welcome, that, Boots. Yeah, that will be... <laughs> That will be uh, distributing funds to the places in most need uh, currently. And let's get started on... Oh, and sorry, we have a, a donation goal uh, happening at $5,000. Frank West is going to start playing a video game that's titled... Time Rem... So, uh, Vampire one. Forums is a <laughs> document that was provided to us. going to bail on that. <laughs> is the game title so boring that you fall asleep while saying it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Vampire Forums is a document provided to us by Amelia Blank, who will be drawing for us later, uh, I'd say tonight, but that's more like tomorrow morning. And uh, let's get started into this. Uh, Jimmy Franks, give us the Welcome to Vampirism Forum intro. Okay. Welcome to Vampirism Forum. We are an open-minded community formed by honest, serious, and mature people that are seeking for a high standard on the research, study, discussion, and support of vampirism as a spiritual tradition, occult culture, and metaphysical practice. This is a gathering not only for vampires, as for witches, the diversity of other kin, and yes, even humans. If you're here to learn, evolve, and develop spiritually, you're more than welcome to join us. For sure, you'll have a nice time around. Okay, my name is Nicole. I'm going to ask a question, and JT, your name is Rudra Shiva, and you're going to answer it. Okay, sounds good. Our vampires human decided to bring up this poll to an important question. Are vampires human? Share your opinion. Uh, I am Rudra Shiva. Uh, I am a vampire. Blah. Uh, hello, Nicole. Uh, obviously, if by the word vampire, you mean any being who can feed on life force. Yes, vampires are humans in that we humans can use some astral and metaphysical techniques to feed from people and life in general. However, as Luis Marquez says on his essay about vampirism, that are just, uh, quote, humans practicing the art of vampirism or something like that. If by vampire you mean an, quote, ascension, that is, a being which is uh, beyond the human conception, then obviously the answer is not. Vampires are not human in the same way that, um, I'm going to say Viras and Divya from the Tantric tradition are beyond the mere human, uh, Pashu and Tantra. Uh, now, you might be asking, what is an ascension? I, uh, I actually looked this up earlier, and I found... Um, the Ascetian Manifesto, which I will link to in the the Discord chat. Oh wow, wow! Somebody yeah. did research. Yeah, yeah, they actually have a, a definition about here. These people. <laughs> uh, it says an Ascetian is a fierce warrior, a faithful lover, and an eternal concubine, having the power of the Pharaoh, the discipline of the samurai, the knowledge of the wizard, and the commitment of the geisha. Great. So a pretty good ride or die bitch. Yes, exactly. All right. All right. The constitution yeah, of a barbarian. That. Yeah. Very well-rounded. Yeah. Um, anyway, 
as I was saying, as I like a lot of the Ascension path tradition and ways, at least as far as I know about it, I would vote no. Vampires are not humans. Well, good. It's a, a clear answer. Thank you. Yes. Nice. Right. <laughs> Straight Very, to the point. Yeah. Right to so the point. No. So, so those two letters. Got uh, it. Isfahan, does Jonathan have something to say about this? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a Jonathan. Um, I agree with what was said by all other users. Vampires are not humans. They do have a human shell, a human body, but their soul is not human. Their core, what really matters, is different. But keep in mind that this is a concept that is almost exclusively Ascetian, since most other groups consider vampires as humans, particularly most of the quote-unquote vampire community in the United States will tell you that vampires are just humans with an energy need. Because humans don't yeah. need energy. Normal humans, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Carbs, what are those? I don't know. Yeah. Actually, they even condemn and criticize the Ascetians for their deeper view that vampires are not humans. But on this, I have to agree with the Ascetians. Vampires, real ones, are not human. I could never agree with a philosophy as shallow as what is, for example, marketed by House Kaperu and other superficial houses. Like Rudra Shiva mentioned, a good resource to explain that and, to some extent, define the vampire and vampirism is the essay written by Luis Marquez. Marquez. Mar Mar Marquez. One yeah, of the best Garcia texts... Marquez. <laughs> yeah, 100, 100 yes. years of blah. Uh, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best texts I've read later in what comes to address the most common misconceptions within the modern vampire community. You can see it published in here at that website. Enjoy. Great. Hmm. Great. Yeah. Great. Oh, this, is, well this is, this is good. This is like some reasonable discussions. Just people yeah. like, like, you know, yeah. Living their lives and exploring their, uh, their beliefs, bunny bread. Mm. You're going to start a new oh, thread for us. On people's beliefs? Your, your name's Ellen Dore. You're going to start a new thread for us. Goddamn right. My name is Ellen Dore. I ain't no Roosh Via. We got new <laughs> shit to talk about. All right. Woo. Let's talk about the nature of your soul, huh? Huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you believe to be the nature of your inner soul, people, without fears of being judged or criticized. I am sure that many come here with the purpose of finding themselves on. <laughs> I'm off to a good start. <laughs> Unco choking on blood or blood. <laughs> Uncovering the secrets that are hidden within their souls and nature. So feel free to express your opinions and intuition on this poll. Namaste. Uh, yeah, my name's Heliana. Hell yeah. Obviously. <laughs> this is an interesting poll indeed. I'm beginning to believe that I have dragon, draconian, and vampiric <laughs> yeah. traits slash nature of my soul. Yeah. But so far, it seems that the vampiric nature overpowers the draconian one. So I'll have to say vampiric. All right, great. Thanks. 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 Uh, yeah, uh, hello. Uh, this is uh, Daniel Onine. Uh, I do not Ooh. feel ashamed of being human, but I do feel an odd feeling whenever someone says I might be only be good for being loyal to an Ascension. It's hard to describe. It spawns from the solar plexus area of my torso and gives me a highly defiant position. Uh, I get the urge to hurt whoever wants me to be loyal because of birthright. I wish to be useful, not because I have loyalty to anyone. I want to be useful because I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> people of this site. I say screw any Ascetian who thinks they are so high and mighty that they deserve my loyalty. I'll go my own way. Yeah, vampires going their own way. That's right. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gilded, and here's what I have to say. Okay. Uh, do not get me wrong. Did I mention anyone having to be loyal to the Ascetians? I'm only mentioning people who want to be near the Ascetians in this case, and therefore assume that they are one of them. And personally, I find it a bit childish and harsh your saying of screw any Ascetian who thinks they are so high and mighty that they deserve my loyalty. I'll go my own way. Yeah. The Ascetians <laughs> The Ascetians need no human's loyalty out of blind faith, and they are certainly mighty and high. They are gods. However, whoever shows them true loyalty, I assume, will not be left unseen and ignored. Yeah, there's no evidence of religion. This, like uh, this, this is playing out exactly like Anne Rice would write it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. She's better with all the pseudonyms this time. 
Yes, um, uh, yes, Gilded. Uh, I'm just saying that just because they're Assyrian and supposedly gods in human form doesn't mean I'll be giving them special reverence for being what they were born as. I have problems with loyalty, maybe from adolescent pride, but I, I can only be loyal to people I deeply respect, so I won't be showing any loyalty to beings who I know nothing about personally. No one <laughs> here even knows what an Assyrian might be like, oh. aside from Gary Jones' work by an He's a demisexual man. It's almost like yeah. we're, we're all making this up as we go. <laughs> Assumed by most of us here, though, you could argue that Marquez implies it strongly. Sorry if I came across a bit odd before. I, I get those sensations and it's as if I'm on drugs. Is I don't it? know what I'm going to say or do. If there was an edit button, I would be fixing what I say so often, but that's also why there isn't one. But there is on the internet, so... Uh... Well, well, speaking, speaking, of, speaking oh, of edit buttons, like, everybody's typing very well. Like, nobody's <laughs> misspelling anything or they're using commas and periods. Well, they, 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 yeah, they've we been don't know what to for do hundreds here. of years. They've had practice. Yeah, oh, okay. That's true. Vampires are known for their uh, their competent uh, spelling and you know grammar and all that stuff. Again, and rice. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but uh, isn't it quite strange now, Daniel, that you say this about loyalty being so conditional? Only a few months ago, you began to post in the forum, and one of your first posts within the "Which lineage inspires you?" thread. You said, I suppose right now the Scorpions, Guardians inspire me. Uh, I'm kind they of rock weird. me like a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because the description is so spot on to blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm going to skippity skip. Uh, uh, anyways, I'm not sure about the rest of this community now that you brought up this subject of your thoughts about being loyal to the uh, Aset Ka. But personally, I would give my life to the AK. Oh, uh, yeah, say it right. It's yeah. here. I would. Yeah. It would be my honor to give my like to the AK. Okay. <laughs> Today's smash, a good day. Like on, like on Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, smash that MF vampire button. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't believe I am blind to have this emotion toward the Assetians. Am I the only one who has this feeling? I got sexual healing. And uh, let's get the last <laughs> yeah, response from Daniel. Yeah, um, I. Yes, I have it sometimes. Uh, it's hard to explain how my mind functions. It's really as if I function on a few completely different personalities which value different things and say things with a bit of variation. I do sometimes have this inadvertent feeling of loyalty, then I question it and act uh, like a rebellious teen. And I look back at myself and wonder what the hell I was thinking both times. Like right now, I'm told uh, it can't be multiple personality, however, because I am aware that something is different afterward and that I would have total blackouts if I was indeed harboring multiple personalities. I almost think of my personalities as colors. Sometimes I'm green, sometimes I'm blue, and sometimes I'm gray. No idea what triggers what, but it happens. Sorry if I said anything stupid. Yeah. Yeah, always <laughs> forgiven God here. God forbid. Yeah, that's <laughs> impossible. Uh, yeah, too late for that. Okay, uh, we're going to skip down to, to... So that was that was section... Uh, Amelia's separated this, sec this document into sections. That was part one, navel gazing. Uh, this is gonna be part two, which is probably navel also gazing navel, navel gazing, yeah. but it's called "Real Talk About Vampires." And <laughs> my name is Natalia, and I want to talk about vampire misinformation. Spin that chair around backwards, and let's get started. Yeah. Hey, folks. Yeah. I Real talk about this baseball cap on the rim of life. Yeah. <laughs> I was reading this newly posted article on a blog from someone using the nickname Hawkboer Link. And thinking to myself that this is one of the reasons why the so-called online vampire community, OVC, is still not taken seriously by the vast majority of the occult community. I've bought so <laughs> many great things off of OVC. It's great. Love it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. The article has some research behind it and is well written. If it weren't for several typical red flags, it would have even passed as an okay article. The... I rolled my eyes in my head an awful lot in saying those two sentences. <laughs> How do you keep reading? Like, yeah. The article defines what is a vampire by quoting what the Atlanta Vampire Alliance uses as their own <laughs> definition for a vampire <laughs> in their webpage. Vampires the in the Atlanta Dirty vampire South. Yeah. Is my funk you know, Freak Nick is very different for them. <laughs> Which is, at the very best, a terrible definition that is just misleading. Their definition starts with... <clears throat> A vampire is a human who is awakened, blah, and bears a commonality with other like kind by having an energy deficiency that requires them to seek an outside source of energy or prana in order to maintain a healthy homeostasis. 
I really wanted to hum some outcast behind you as you did that, but uh, it wasn't going to work. Cause, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like homeostasis is like a like a, a sick word to bring out for a rhyme, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, I was just going to do like, uh, uh, push their foes. Everybody, yeah, never mind. Then it's just fine. keep going. It's fine. This okay. is fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. We're all fine. Yeah, so, this is our seven. So a vampire is anyone who is awakened? Awakened to what? Did you, did you know there is a whole world of your little vampire movie bubble? No. A human can be spiritually awakened to a variety of things, from a religion or belief to a personal achievement and enlightenment. Dr. Mikao Usui, founder of the Japanese Reiki system. Oh, yeah. for fuck's sake. Okay. Finally some mm. science. Said he was awakened in Mount Kurama, where he learned the secrets of Reiki. And energy manipulation. So according to this definition, that makes Usoi a vampire? Yeah. I'm according sure he Atlanta, would be yeah. screaming in his grave, as would many other awakened individuals. Uh, sir, he, he's a vampire. He's undead. He's not in his grave. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to skip down a bit. Actually, in reality, most vampires have far more energy in their systems than most humans. Not only their energy is more intense as it flows at higher rates. <laughs> <clears throat> Boy, they drain yeah. to empower themselves and to activate and enhance latent metaphysical abilities, not to feed as humans feed from food. Some yeah. vampires may get ill if they don't drain. That is true. But that happens because they have exhausted their own reserves due to magical working, be it active or passive, mm. but not because they have deficiencies in their energy system. No, no. Um, so, wait, isn't that I exactly think, what they I just think... said in the previous two sentences? I think this person is a real vampire because I can feel the energy draining from me as you're. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, th this happens because they've exhausted their own reserves, uh, but not because they have deficiencies in their energy system. Is that uh, yeah. those two? Yeah. All right. Cool. So yeah. makes it's sense. working as intended. It's <laughs> got it. Uh, yep. All right. Bugs not features. Uh, Buddy Bread, take over where it says modern or real vampires primarily. Can I just sing Outcast instead? Yes. Okay. That's that's a perfect <clears throat> thing to do. Southern playalistic, Cadillac, funky music, modern or real vampires, primarily. Okay, that was good. Uh, JT, yep. you want oh, to take over modern enough. or real vampires primarily? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> uh, modern or real vampires primarily fall into two primary categories classified by their feeding method. Semicolon. Psychic or psi vampires and sanguinarian blood vampires. So Ooh. real vampires must be modern vampires. How about ancient and classic vampires? Oh, yes, I forgot. They think vampires started in New York's nightclubs in the 90s. My bad. Now back to reality. Vampires are not and cannot be classified by their feeding methods. As eloquently explained in the article on real vampirism published by the Asset Ka link, uh, the method of feeding relates with personal preference doesn't define the vampire. A vampire can drain blood and energy, not just one thing or another, making you a psychic vampire or a sanguinarian. That's just too many hours around computer games, I'm afraid. And let me quote the author Luis Marquez on this subject. <laughs> too many hours around computer games as you all type and type and type and type about vampires on a computer. No, this is not computer games. This is real vampires. This is the no. real shit right here. He already established this, his phone. Yes. So, uh, and I quote, In any serious study of vampirism, the subject of feeding is always a relevant field, being also a prevalent misunderstanding in the nature of the vampire. There is a tendency among the less aware to describe the existence of several types of vampires according to their feeding techniques. Labeled under a myriad of names, the most widespread concepts are the psychic vampire that feeds of vital force or prana, the sanguinarian that feeds of fresh blood. Oh, thank God. I'm safe. <laughs> Southern playalistic Cadillac <laughs> Funky. We are now uh, $23.24 away from... Uh, from Frank West playing a garbage video, video game. game. All right. Nice, so, nice, uh, nice. That's exciting. Let's uh, let's 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 move on to our next uh, topic here. Hey, Bunny Brown. Yeah, I wanna, I'm going to read. Yeah, you I want to read. I'll treat it with the respect it deserves. <laughs> yes, I will. I will treat this with the absolute reverence that it does deserve. Please. Okay, you got a, You've got a really a really uh, succinct question for us. Oh, <laughs> Your okay. name is Ag Agrab. Agrab. <laughs> <clears throat> Lakins and vampires. Hello, <laughs> my name is Agreb. Having heard of the dangers of the occult world out there, 
in Portugal or any other part of the world, I have heard from a few of the danger that awaits the Asians, Athians, or any other form of empire. Or lichens, dot, dot, dot. I am already quite aware of the fact that the energy of the lichens is completely the opposite of the energy of the vampires. Being one obvious reason for the two beings to uh, hate one another. But I'm sure it goes deeper than that. There must be a history beneath the hate that burns today. One question I have is wondering where and when wait in history and a why no wait. One question I have is wondering where and when in history and why these two beings, vampires and lichens, come to be such enemies to a point that even today slang occurs. And I am sure many of the slayers are not just humans and witches. Witches, excuse me. Also, I'm a, I'm aware where that metaphysically <laughs> all vampires are his much fake teeth more... keep falling out of his mouth. He has to keep pushing them back in. Blah blah. That metaphysically <laughs> vampires are much more advanced, advanced and stronger than lichens, but. Physically, the lichens are able to overpower, uh, being much more strongly built than the bodies of vampires. Which gives some sense why no matter how strong the vampire may be metaphysically, there will always be danger out there for him. The other questions, <laughs> which I wonder if anyone has an idea on, is the history of the lichens themselves. How they came to be what they are today. This has been a grab. I disappear. disappear in so none of this is based <laughs> off movies from the 90s. But, you know, we'll, we'll just use the terminology and storyline of Underworld to... Yeah, uh, I like... I, I like, yeah. like, like is documentary, yes? Yeah, I, I, and I just want to real quick say, uh, Buddy Brett, I think that, that uh, accent had you on the ropes there for a little bit, but you managed to pull Not out a little bit. The TKO. Well, the it, was, it was a TKO. It was roped out as Russian and then gradually It was rope dope you know, he just like... let the accent punch itself out on his arms. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it was a really good Muhammad Ali kind of thing. I once saw a, a werewolf <laughs> drinking a pee in your colada, tornado Vicks. Wicks. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Franks, you're going to yeah. carry on as Daniel 09 here. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Lincoln I know doesn't have, like vampires very much at all, although he has befriended me quite well. Suffice to say, I have a talent for that. We do have more in common than most people in the area. Only difference is I'm sneakier and use my mental energy more. He really is just a brute force powered by this massive amount of physical energy. I assume the Lycans became enemies of the vampires in the beginning, most likely because of a territorial disputes. May even relate to accidental killings of vampires by lichens. They have eaten an unfortunately hard time staying under control. I don't know the history of lichens, but I'm certain they're true and exist, although not in full wolf form like in some tales. My lichen friend has to shave his palms and face every day to stay looking somewhat normal. I think I'll question him about this and see if he knows anything about the histories behind things. And uh, Agrab, you've got responses? I do. Oh, this stuff shit. not in bold. Oh, okay. They are known to be in the form of a wolf in the astral plane. Not in the physical, of course. Oh, of course. Okay. Mm. Of course. Glad we clarified that. We, have, we be... can't have anything empirical happening around Durr. here. Vampires or werewolves. In addition, after holding a discussion with someone with more insight in the subject than myself, we came to an agreement that maybe the history of the lichens is not so well known as the vampires. Because of their disorganized ways, which is their natural ways, they simply function very disorderly. Shit is happening again. <laughs> I cannot... You know what wolves don't do? Uh, coordinate. Yes. <laughs> I cannot imagine a heaven of lichens and see them having rules that they would follow like I could imagine with a vampire heaven. This has been a grab. Look, <laughs> don't forget to tip your waiter. <laughs> um, and so like uh, they, they carry on back and forth a little bit. Jonathan pipes in. Uh, but then Victor shows up and Victor is uh, a little bit of an anti-vampire racist. Oh, sorry, anti-werewolf oh, oh, racist. Oh, boo, Victor. So. You bring shame upon the name Victor. Goddamn, Victor. <sighs> that was Victor's sign. Also. 
So somebody needs to find Frank West. Also, I'm looking in video games. What? Did we is that will wake him up? Like you play it three times and he appears behind you? Yeah. All right, go, go, <laughs> we, we Beetlejuice. We 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 have to play it once for every hundred dollars that's donated. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, do we need an actual victor or? That's this fun. This fun. Oh, sorry. Werewolves and lichens. Well, from my experience, I would say that werewolves are a vastly disorganized society. Composed mostly by small covens or solitary individuals with no known higher orders in their community. Their uh, physical strength and aggression represents a major danger to vampires. However, the metaphysical powers of a vampire clearly outscores any werewolf. (laughs) Not that the people of this form would have any kind of biases. Uh, As far as origins are concerned, werewolves are actually far more recent in history than vampires. The problem is that most of them have no clue about their past and no information on their history. And to be quite honest, the majority does not seem even much interested in studying that subject. Most knowledge about the history of werewolves is actually kept among scholars and institutions like the VWG. (laughs) Everything (laughs) needs an acronym. The Vampire Watchers Group and other smaller circles of devoted researchers. Vampires have originated in ancient Egypt, the dawn of civilization, by the two firstborn bloodlines, the so-called pure bloods, which are well-known Scythians and Ascetians. Several other bloodlines have sprout after a long history, usually called half-bloods or by the purists and elitists in the community, the unpure bloodlines. <laughs> Is he just tearing this directly out of a White Wolf manual somewhere? <laughs> However, although definitive information about the origin of werewolves is not fully known, at least not by me and my people, clues indicate for possible origins in Asia and medieval Europe. What, e- what era of Asia? Who cares? Old, <laughs> but still a far more modern epic than the birth of the first vampires. What Daniel mentioned about how many of the wars originated may make some sense since vampires do tend to feel naturally superior to werewolves as they do to humans. Now, on what comes to being messy, that couldn't be wronger. Mm, right, nothing wrong. wronger than this on this. Uh, yeah. <sighs> vampires are creatures of a high taste and very evolved spiritual and very evolved spirituality. Yep. Some are like the aristocracy among other kin. Oh, good. Ooh, Bingo. <laughs> What what does that mean? You know. If you have to ask, you'll never know, Boots. Racist. It's the other kin oligarchy, you know. Do other kin have lords? Shit, yeah. I'm I'm sure sure all other kin would agree that vampires are superior to whatever they are. Yeah. I'm a castle kid. They are surely never messy, at least if we don't consider real vampires many of the wannabes in the American and European bar slash party subculture, like House Caperu and such. That I can see as messy, unappealing, and greasy feeling on an energy level. But it has nothing to do with real vampirism in it. Right, okay. But back on subject, werewolves tend to be quite more messy, rude, and such. Physically, they tend to be larger, as in thicker and taller than vampires. However, there are also known short members, but highly muscularly built or even fat. Wait a second. Are they just thinking that, like, all vampires are girls and all werewolves are boys? Is that pretty much it here? Like, all... No? Oh, uh, werewolves are, uh, they're... They're from they're Mars just, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. some yeah. vampires from Venus? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like, when somebody walks in a room, you can immediately tell whether you, they're yeah, a werewolf really or a vampire. Yeah. yeah, werewolves always go into their cave. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, the turning into real wolves is obviously myth, and I believe that is properly explained in the Assetian Bible, being connected with their archetype and shape that they might take in the astral realms. Again, uh, vampires and more raging <laughs> werewolves. Okay. Keep going. Okay. Come on, man. I was just now learning. Again, I agree Come that on. Daniel's right. Werewolves have hair, it turns out. That they outnumber vampires. Uh-huh. Despite what many people may believe, vampires are a very rare kin. That's why they're so hard to find them talking to each other on the internet. Right. And they don't appear in huge numbers throughout the world. Werewolves are fairly more common and easy to find. 
Still, in documented battles along history between both kins, they were mostly defaced, killed, and tortured. Given the high organization of vampires and the power of its ruling orders, kills of vampires from werewolves, just like tortures and attacks, occur mostly in isolated situations where a vampire is caught unguarded by a pack of raging werewolves or just an attacking one. These situations appear to be mostly random in nature. However, a few cases of rivalry and retaliation have also occurred in the recent past, almost as if they're organized at some level. Mm. <laughs> Okay, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's all, I'm glad that's clear. Yeah, yeah. got it. Okay, there's, vamp- so... there's vampires and there's werewolves and something. Yeah. And so what do we do for the next half hour? Uh, we got this settled. Well, yeah. my name's my name's Necrovamp. Uh, Ooh. Hey. Yeah. I'm Necrovamp. It's fun. Your nightshade, JT. Your Rhea K. Rhea Kai. Okay. And Bunny Bread. Your Jonathan. Goddamn right. Uh, my name's Necrovamp, and I hate sunlight. <laughs> yes, right. the, Garfield, the Garfield of vampires. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I go out in it. Sometimes I even get a tan, and it makes me feel a little more tolerable. But no, all in not, all, you're not more tolerable. Feel a little more tolerable. <laughs> Somehow <laughs> so people can deal with me for a little bit more. Oh, uh. having a tan makes it feel tolerable. You know, I'm a vampire. But all in all, I hate it. It's a fact. End of story. Avatar. Yeah, your favorite avatar. movie. Woo! What's that supposed your, to be in there? Your avatar is the word know. avatar. Yeah. <laughs> it's meta avatar. Uh, I'm Nightshade. Is there some relevance to this? I would imagine there is. I mean, after all, this is a forum for vampires. <sighs> I'd say it's safe to assume I don't have ooh, zero derma pigmentosum. Cracker asses. Sounds like a Harry's Potter spell for giving yourself a tan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe it's just a it maybe it's just a some sort of photosensitivity. It's physical, I know that. If you're questioning its relevance as far as whether you feel the topic is important or not, then why even bother to respond to the topic? Maybe others will find it relevant. I guess we'll find out. Necrovamp. The topic of dislike towards sunlight is pretty broad and can apply to millions of people. Just have a browse around social media. You can see many individuals talking about how much they utterly detest the sun, but have no interest in spirituality or even vampirism, and would laugh when the topic is brought up. If you look a little bit deeper, you will find that the elements of true vampirism are not solely dependent upon the dislike of sunlight. If you'd like to learn more, or participate in serious discussion, I'd encourage you to make an introductory thread, and of course, to keep an open mind. Thanks for the advice. I have an open mind. I think many people that scoff at the idea for and for how and why they hate sunlight being attributed to vampirism are most likely those that are close-minded. If your response is an indication of some disbelief in me being a vampire, then maybe you're right. Maybe I'm not a vampire. Maybe I'm the king of broccoli. Or maybe you should quit being so close-minded and contribute something positive to this topic. God damn. Why is Necrovamp so, like, king of broccoli? Yeah. Why is he <laughs> at all these yeah. responses. Oh, God. Bring it up broccoli. <laughs> cool your jets, man. Just, Jesus. Making him think about vegetables. <laughs> please do not. Please, please do not misunderstand me. I am not declaring what you are. That would be pretty erroneous of me, especially without knowing you and only after seeing a couple of posts. I neither believe nor disbelieve in what you are, as that is entirely irrelevant to me. However, from your attitude, I can already tell that you are trying to come in here loudly in a blaze of vamp glory. (laughs) (laughs) Shut up! So are you able to explain why proving yourself and announcing yourself is so important in a forum of strangers? Inflammatory snark isn't going to get you very far here. Who cares if people think you're a vampire or not? This indicates that you are not comfortable with capital S self. If you came here expecting for people to affirm your identity, then you are not in the right place. I have a body by the Jonathan. Like, uh-huh. that core guy. <laughs> Calls him Necro Guy. <laughs> guy, the Necro Fella, Necro Body. I know it. 
Like, Fireball is just trying to explain to you the hate and sunlight doesn't necessarily have anything to do with vampirism. They're, they're vampires who can't stand the energy or vibration of solar light, see? But there are others who are perfectly comfortable in the sun. At this point, I, I see you both you being unnecessarily rude in every reply to both Rhea and Nightshade, which which only breeds breeds insecurity. We don't have that in here. We we already had everybody to take a moment and look over at uh, King Calamari's drawing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we done I think with that moment the... is done. No, oh, right, yeah. no we can just yeah we can burn up a good no, 25 just, minutes just on like, that. like this like we could take the, the next 15 minutes and just look at king calamari's drawing yeah okay. no pressure <laughs> yeah we hate our audience it's fine look <laughs> 23 and a half hours of <laughs> staring <laughs> at garfield <laughs> with a cape hey uh, uh jimmy franks yeah 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 um I got. I'm, I'm my name is light chaser and your name is oh, light hey. vein. night you're not i'm light chaser you're night vein I think we're. Okay. I think we're. We're. Uh, yeah, you're a duo. You fight crime together. Of each other. Yeah. Oh There's shit. Some pretty powerful uh, vampire names. Yeah, yeah. How, yeah. how do you become a vampire? Title says it all. <clears throat> Enough said. <clears throat> this is Night Vane. These four things which may qualify someone as a vampire. Other types of vampires or vampiric beings exist, and their definition would describe how they are a vampire. Here are the four things I am speaking of. One, a need for extra energy or life force in the form of blood, sexual energy, pranic energy, and oh, fuck. elemental, the most common. Number What's two, pranic energy? Is that like prawns? It's a, it's like, it comes from your perineum. I, I, oh, I think, no, it's what people are constantly asking how they can increase the size of. Oh, got it. All right. <laughs> My sex pranic. Uh... Number two, their condition or need for this life force is so real it cannot be described as anything else. It also cannot be completely satiated by food. The individual can only approach health in this way. Three, they have met with a doctor and the doctor is not able to diagnose them. In other words, nothing can explain this as any kind of illness and it does not go away upon medication, special nutrition, diets, vitamins, etc. <laughs> Picturing a doctor just like scratching his head like, I don't know, maybe you're a vampire? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, vampire, doctor, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling very. All right, Ill. so your charts say you're full of shit name. and your your teeth are all fucked up, but uh, you know. Four, they're not average. Their science or whatever makes them vampiric clearly indicates they've crossed the barriers of the natural world and its science, which can be applied to the average human. An example. I have returned from death and am very different than I was before. I am increasingly vampiric. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, is one of is. many accounts. <laughs> Most from the category of vampire are similar. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's a source this can be cited from, but I know the person myself. That is how I obtained this information from this person's account of the beginning of the vampiric transformation. They're real. They just live in Canada. That's why you haven't met them. Right, right. <laughs> Uh, this is the most commonly used method of describing what real vampires are. Although there are some unique individuals I would still consider as vampiric, despite any number of differences to this application. Here's some more information for you. Oh, okay, God. so that was <laughs> so so that was a good amount of content we've read for Vampirism Forum. I've got some other material about a uh, famous vampire chubby checker. Uh, <laughs> yeah! JT. <laughs> Uh, I'd like you to take the first few paragraphs of Chubby Checker's uh, public letter to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh, where is this? I just pasted it in the Discord chat. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh yeah. Do do? Okay. <laughs> Why isn't Chubby Checker in no, the Rock and Roll read Hall the, of Fame? the stuff in the white uh, text. Okay. So he, so uh, Chubby yes. Checker uh, published a letter in the Rock in the Rolling Stone magazine directed to the. Uh, well, you'll see. Okay, Chubby Checker, my, my favorite uh, vampire, personally. Uh, this is my message to the Nobel Prize nominators and the nominators of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, TV, radio, motion pictures, entertainment, entertainers, and the general public at large worldwide. Should you choose me, I'll consider it honorable. 
However, I have conditions for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. To place the uh, twist symbol that's on Chubby Checker's beef jerky, the statue (laughs) on top of a 30-foot or so pedestal in the courtyard of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I would like to be alone, thank you. I changed the business. I'm often called the wheel that rock rolls on as long as people are dancing apart to the beat of the music they enjoy. Uh, before Alexander Graham Bell, no telephone. Before Thomas Edison, no electric light. Before uh, Dr. George Washington Carver, no oil from seed or cloning of plants. Before Henry Ford, no V8 engine. Before Walt Disney, no animated cartoons. Before Chubby Checker, no dancing apart to the beat. Yeah. What is dancing apart to the beat? Dancing apart to the beat is the dance that we do when we dance apart to the beat of anybody's oh. music. Yeah. <laughs> and before Chubby Checker, it could not be found. So am so, I just like tagging out or? <laughs> um, yeah. Like what? So uh, I, I discussed with the bump girl at one point and we, we took a, we took a while debating it. And our conclusion with is that dancing a part to the beat is that me- means that when you're dancing, uh, but not touching someone else. <laughs> Okay, that's that's the best I could figure out. That's that's uh, so the before best Chubby got. Checker, it was impossible to dance by yourself. Right. right. Yeah. So he like he's the most he's the most important he's the the roll <laughs> the rock what was it the rock the wheel that rock rolls on. Okay. So it, it's <laughs> dancing apart, not together. Yeah. To the beat. Yeah. Apart, right. but apart is all one word, of course. Right. 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 Uh, Bunny Brad, take the take the next two paragraphs. Where the hell did I get to this from? Oh, you said he was the, the Discord link, and the garbage I, day chat. In the garbage day chat. Uh, right, I'm not seeing it. Okay, uh, if, uh, I'll take the next part. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy Franks, take the next part. Elvis Presley is the king of rock and roll, no doubt. Oh, there love it. However, the rock and roll was already here. He just became the king of it. The Beatles, who we all love so dearly, their likeness was done by the Beach Boys, Buddy Holly, and the Crickets, but it's evident that they did much, They did it much, much better. Hank Ballard wrote and recorded the twist. The inner city kids made a dance to that song. The record died on the radio. Radio stopped playing the record. The twist the Video killed the radio star. <laughs> no one was going to hear the record, and no one was ever going to see the dance. We re-recorded the twist and campaigned the song and the dance at DJ Record Dance Parties in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Radio stations started to play the twist by Chubby Checker. We finally made it to American Bandstand and showed the world what it was. Chubby Checker changed everything. He gave movement to a music that never had this movement before. The styles changed. The nightclub scene is forever changed. Chubby Checker gave birth to aerobics. Oh, Ooh. shit. Mic uh, drop. I don't know. <laughs> Damn. Uh, and then Bunny Bread, do you, you find the where we are? Yeah, but I don't want a part of this. <laughs> okay, then I'll Fuck read. you. Go ahead. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Look, hey, man, if I ain't Ed Cloud, I. Chubby Checker would sound dumb with that accent. Buddy Bread will take no part in anything that diminishes the music to a movement. No, 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 no. <laughs> Unless, what? Am I not taking it? No, no, I meant the accent. <laughs> you take the words. <laughs> I. You, read the. Do some last vampire episodes. I've done this accent before. No, 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 no. I'm the originator. I'm the first one who ever came up. Please <laughs> oh my just God. do it. Go ahead. There's so go much beef happening in this fucking to music and move. This is my werewolf voice, okay? <laughs> a movement that could not be found unless you were trained at some studio learning something other than dancing a part to the beat. It's <laughs> fun. <laughs> the twist. The only song since time began to become number one twice by the same artist. <laughs> oh yes, we're talking about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but let's face the truth: this is Nobel Prize territory. I remember that episode of Inspector Gadget. <laughs> I think the second song he's talking about is literally "Let's Twist Again." Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like yeah. Yeah. it could be a, uh, it could be Chubby Checker and the Fat Boys doing the twist. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he, he's sort of in it, but uh, Fat Boys were really. So he pretty cool. much released the same song in the lyrics. Are like, let's twist again like we did last summer. And, it's yeah. like, and then some this, records. Try this album, yeah. too. 
Uh, at one point, I just got on a whole distraction. At one point, I went to the uh, the Chubby Checker like Wikipedia page, and somebody had vandalized it, and nobody had fixed it. It was, it was like a, it was like a list of his his top songs, and it was just like it was like let's twist underwater. Uh, like one of the songs was an entirely overwhelming amount of twist. <laughs> Entirely too much twist. <laughs> Those twists like Shyamalan. Uh, keep going. The twist is very recognizable <laughs> when you dance a part to the beat. Hey, that's oh, my voice. <laughs> the party, two on one side and two on the other side. The dance that I introduced in 1961 is the biggest dance of the century. They do it to everything in the 70s. 80s, 90s, and now zeros. And what about my fly? To explain it better, throw your hands in the air, wait for it, and wave like you just don't care. If you fly, you automatically do the shake from 1959 to this. It's either the twist, the pony, the fly, the shake, or some other nasty shit in between. Please, I urge you to not look upon my comments as self-centered, proud, love thyself. This is not what this is about, because I can't keep that up. Since I have such a unique situation in the music business, I feel only I can explain it. If the music industry knew or understood this reoccurring phenomenon that's renewed every time the beat begins, they would have explained it through decades. Yes, dancing apart to the beat is Chubby Checker. Everybody is doing it, every day, every month, every year, since its discovery in 1959. Chubby Checkers, given the music business something great, now he wants his greatness returned. I'll, I'll wrap it I, up. Okay, fine, follow that. I want my flowers while I'm alive. I can't smell them when I'm dead. The people that come to see the show have given me everything. However, I will not have the music business ignorant of my position in the industry. Dick Clark said, and I quote, the three most important things that ever happened in the music industry are Elvis Presley, the Beatles, and Chubby Checker. Now, I ask you, where is my more money and my more fame? Well, okay. God bless and have mercy. You know I love you. Yours Woo! truly, Chubby Checker. Big Chubbs! P.S. I am also placing this letter on www.chubbychecker.com for the world to see. It would grieve me to have them ignorant of what I stand for in the music industry. Chubby Checker... Yourself and making more money? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chubby Checker is king of the way we dance worldwide since 1959. Which is a part to the beat. Oh, okay. That's what you were... All right. Um, yeah, so... I don't know. Demanding that he has a 30-foot pedestal... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that has the logo of his beef jerky company on the top of it so in his signature he put 2001 it's 2019 he's still alive so uh, yeah uh, well he's a vampire he's I don't know waiting. if he picked up on that <laughs> I think he's still not in the rock and roll hall of fame <laughs> some anti-vampire racism that's nor, what nor does he have a Nobel Prize what? A no plus, he's gotta have a Nobel Prize plus, by now. what did we learn this hour? no yeah Okay. Oh, 1959 was the birth of all movement. I was yeah. personally surprised to see like references to like Reiki and uh, like ancient Egypt and shit with the vampires. I wasn't. Yeah. Well, with with any kind of woo or occult stuff, there's no hard and fast rule. You can kind of all put it in the same pot. As, yeah. You know. As long I'm as... shocked we didn't have like uh, energy pyramids in here, kind of yeah. like that. Because I think at some like... level people understand like, well. If I if I say vampires are real, I can't say that like Reiki is bullshit because it's, it's kind of all drawing from the same well, you know. Yeah, fair Chubby enough. Checker has his own brand of beef jerky. Yeah. Yes. That's the most shocking part of this evening. Thank yeah. you. That's what and I it learned. has a statuesque pose on top of it. <laughs> a pose that needs to be on a statue. Uh, I learned that I can get too deep into accents sometimes. <laughs> oh, really? Sometimes. Come on, cousin, let's go bowling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that was the Vampires and Chubby Checker Hour. <laughs> yeah. Finally, together at last. Finally, yeah. together at last. You got your vampires and my Chubby Checker. Uh, yeah, Wolfman Jack, don't play Vampire Chubby Checker. <laughs> Wolfman Jack, don't play vampire, chubby checker. Oh, yeah, all right. Thanks to King Calamari for the fantastic art during the last two hours. Yes. 
Uh, we're going to be back in about 10 minutes uh, with Lemon, Boots, Bunny Bread, Isfahan, Jimmy Franks, JT, JW Friedman, uh, sanguinary novel on the on the art stream doing uh, an amazing thing. I've been I've been watching her prepare for uh, for the last several weeks. And uh, our document is going to be survivalists and doomsday preppers. Uh, sit tight, folks. Actually, you know, get up, stretch your legs. Don't sit tight. Just you know, yeah. you don't want to Do get both. deep vein thrombosis. Avoid that. 